Hey everybody, Nick here from Windy City Astrophotography. Today I want to talk about these filters that I got from Botter Planetarium. They're CMOS optimized ultra high speed narrowband filters. I've had them for about a month now and wanted to give you an overview of some of my thoughts on these filters and show you some of the images at the end as well. Now full disclosure, I have gotten no payment or sponsorship from Botter Planetarium. I bought these with my own money and I want to give you my honest opinion about how they work. So it was about a year ago that I decided I wanted to get really serious about astrophotography. And for that, I needed a system that I could use from the city. I live here in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm under Bortle 9 class skies. Now, if you don't know the Bortle class system, it runs from essentially Bortle 1 up to Bortle 9. Bortle 1 being pristine, dark skies. You can see the Milky Way, absolutely no problem with the naked eye. There's no light domes or anything on the horizon. You're able to see a pristine, dark sky. Bortle 9, well, that's Chicago or any major city. Lots of light pollution. A few stars still visible, if not a complete loss, but not a whole lot. And uh, you might think, well, astrophotography is kind of out the window in that case. However, I can get away with it with narrowband imaging. Essentially, if you imagine the visible spectrum of light, that runs from blue all the way up to red. And it covers about 300 nanometers of light, from 400 nanometers up to 700 nanometers at the red end. So within that, you can divide that into thirds. So from 700 to 600, that's red. From 600 to 500, that would be green. And from 500 to 400, that would be blue. Now, if you're imaging with a monochrome camera and using red, green, and blue filters, that's essentially what you're looking at. You've got about 100 nanometers of band pass for those. Those are considered broadband filters. But in the case of narrowband filters, we're taking that down to a very small section of the electromagnetic spectrum. So consider the fact that this H-alpha filter here is 3.5 nanometers. That's the width of the band pass. Now that's roughly 1% of that entire visible spectrum of light. So if you're thinking about all that light pollution in the night sky from Chicago, imagine cutting out 99% of that and only being able to see 1%. Well, here's the trick. In the case of hydrogen alpha, this is red light. It's at 656 nanometers, so very close to that red end of the spectrum. And that's the light that's emitted by hydrogen atoms, hydrogen molecules that are in these very energetic parts of space. So in these energetic parts of space, maybe with star formation or star death, like a supernova, you've got this light being emitted by this excited, this ionized hydrogen gas. So consider this, you can cut out 99% of the spectrum of visible light and only be looking at about 1%, but in that 1% is essentially all of the emitted light from these particular objects in space. It's a really exciting thing to be able to do to only focus in on the very specific parts of the spectrum that you want to look at. And that's the case also with oxygen and sulfur that we have here as well. So S, H, and O, sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now these filters are fast shifted. They're optimized for an F2 to about an F4 system. So if you've got something slower than that, let's say you've got a refractor that's F6 or F7, you're actually not gonna want to be getting these filters because you'd be missing some of that signal that's coming through. Similarly, if you have a Rasa or something like a Hyperstar or maybe just a fast camera lens, you're gonna be wanting to use fast shifted filters like this. There's something about the angle of the light where it's coming in through the filter that these filters have been specially designed in order to transmit as much of that particular wavelength of light as possible. Uh, if you don't use optimized filters for the speed of your system, then you're gonna be running into trouble where you're actually not getting the full transmission that you could. And if you've already got a fast system like Rasa and you're shooting monochrome as well, you might as well get these fast shifted filters. Why else would you be uh, wanting to use a fast system like that without getting as much out of it as you can? One of the issues that Botter was trying to address with these new filters, they were trying to get rid of some of the haloing that you can see around brighter stars in images. So I wanna show you an image here. I stayed up pretty late the other night to image the Horsehead Nebula in Orion. Now, Alnitak, that is the easternmost star in Orion's belt, this is pretty famous, or I guess infamous, for astrophotographers. It's very bright, easily seen with the naked eye, and it's very close, as you can see, to the Horsehead Nebula. This is 60 seconds at gain 70 on the ASI 1600 mm Pro. Now you can see, there's maybe a hint of a halo. This is a screen-stretched image 
but nothing much. There's maybe a little bit of diffraction here that's coming from one of my camera cables. Could have tied that down better, but then again, it was also about 4.30 in the morning, so I wasn't, uh, wasn't worried about that too much. Now, I only took a few images, but stacking 15 of those together yields this. So you can see some of the power of the Rasa and monochrome imaging here. This is 15 minutes of integration, already a great start. Some haloing around on attack for sure. I want to play around with that a little bit, maybe some, some different gains and exposure times to try and cut down on that a little bit. But honestly, depending on your camera and the issues it has with microlensing and things like that, and also perhaps your processing skills, if they're up to snuff, uh, you might be able to really reduce that quite a bit. So I will say, it's not completely removed with these filters. But honestly, if that amount of haloing bothers you a ton, maybe the Rasa isn't for you. Maybe go with a nice triplet aperchromatic refractor. Uh, you are gonna have longer integration times in order to get the amount of signal that you can get from Rasa in just one night, or as we saw in 15 minutes. But you're gonna have those halos reduced considerably and also not have to buy necessarily these fast shifted filters. All right, I want to get to some of the images that I've been taking over the past month, but first, what are my overall impressions of these filters? I think they're excellent. I see no reason not to get them if you have that fast system, you're shooting monochrome as well, you're going to be extremely pleased. I'm shooting from Bordel 9 Chicago and getting really good results. So yeah, overall, there's nothing I wouldn't recommend about these filters. They've certainly cut down on that haloing. They have excellent transmission. That band pass is very thin, 3.5 nanometers on the H-alpha and then four nanometers on the S2 and on the O3. That's amazing. And at the price point, honestly, I think that's pretty incredible. I was expecting to pay actually a lot more for these filters when I heard the band pass that they were shooting for. Highly recommend. I think they're great. And if you want to be imaging from a light polluted place, this is going to get you through. Now, when I get to these images, you're going to see I went a little bit more for quantity rather than quality. I think they're all good images but certainly the integration times a little bit less than what I would generally say would be a complete image. I'm looking forward to in the fall and winter letting the telescope just drink in that light, racking up 10, 15, maybe 20 plus integration hours on an image, and really seeing the power of narrowband imaging even from the city. All right, so let's get to the images that I've captured over my first month using these new Botter Ultra High Speed F2 filters. Definitely enjoy that. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and also subscribe to the channel, Windy City Astrophotography. Plenty of uh, good content coming up, new videos I've got in mind. And also, of course, if these clear skies keep up, plenty of cool images to share as well. So enjoy the gallery. Thanks for watching.